name is Hannah Keating. Um, I'm the Associate Curator of Public Programs at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna run through the sort of outline of the Seniors Art Competition and Exhibition, um, beginning with um, the, the differences this year. So 2021, we're doing things a little differently. Um, so the first thing is that we are not doing an in-person exhibition in Gallery A like we usually would. Um, the awards uh, reception will also take place virtually, so we'll be hosting that on Zoom. Um, and the submission process is very different this year as well because um, we're going to be photographing all of the works a few weeks beforehand um, and then uh, putting those photographs up into a virtual exhibition um, on the RMG website. So just a quick note here about um, getting your artwork photographed. Um, we aren't uh, making those appointments right now, um, but if you do want to call, um, we are adding names to a callback list. And then um, as we get closer to um, those first two weeks of May, um, we'll be slotting people into appointment times when you can come into um, the library or the senior center to have uh, your piece photographed by one of the staff people over there. So here are just a quick view of some of the important dates to keep in mind right off the top. So Mar uh, May 3rd to the 14th, um, that's gonna be the documentation window. So that's the period of time where everyone will get their appointment. Um, you'll come in at your specified time. The appointment should only be about 15 minutes at, at the maximum. Um, and uh, the whole setup will be there. You'll bring in your work sort of ready to hang just like um, in previous years. So for anyone who has participated in this exhibition in the past, um, one of the requirements was to bring your piece into the RMG ready to hang. So whether that's, um, you know, framed or, or um, you know, with the pins that you wanted to use to pin your piece up, um, it's gonna be the same thing so that you can just walk right in hang it on the nail and then someone will photograph your work uh, for you. Um, or if it's a 3D piece of uh, sculpture, um, same thing, there will be a setup there and um, photographs will be taken in that way. So the exhibition itself, uh, it's gonna be on virtual RMG, which is our, um, you know, newly created, it's one year old nearly, uh, space on our website for all of our virtual programming. Um, and so that's going to be live from June 4th to July 4th, um, with uh, the virtual opening and awards reception taking place on Friday, June 11th. So that's the, the sort of second Friday of the, of the exhibition's run. So in terms of calling folks for, um, you know, getting that appointment to get your piece uh, documented. Um, you're either going to call Tracy or Jen. So they're on the call with us today. Um, and I just am going to pop up their info for a brief moment if you wanted to jot it down. But of course, this information is also on the, um, uh, the, the pamphlet uh, that's available on the library's website. Um, so Tracy's with the uh, Oshawa Senior Center and Jennifer uh, over at the library. So you can give those ladies a call and uh, they'll either put you down on a wait list so that we can have your name ready for when we're making appointments or if it's closer to May, they'll just slot you in based on your availability. So I just wanna do a quick little view here. This is the RMG's uh, homepage, our website, and you can see virtual RMG, it's the second item on, um, on our top menu bar. And when you click into there, um, we have a ton of different things under virtual RMG, but the second thing on the list uh, is virtual exhibitions. And that's where this exhibition is going to live. So for the sort of June 4th to July 4th, uh, this exhibition will be sort of first on the list when you open virtual RMG on our website. So I uh, just wanted to quickly go over some of the eligibility for this program. Um, this is not uh, new. These are, uh, you know, eligibility pieces that we've carried through from previous years. Um, so everyone who wants to take part uh, can submit one original artwork um, and we're allowed, it's, it's usually sort of from the last year. Um, unfortunately, in 2020, we weren't able to host um, this exhibition. So um, if anyone had any work from 2019 to 2021, we just wanted to give that opportunity um, if you really had a piece that you had wanted to submit um, last year. Um, as I said before, 2D and 3D entries um, are welcome and any medium also is accepted. So 
if anyone has any specific questions about this, um, you know, I'm happy to uh, take those and we can chat through um, specific ideas if you have them. But in general, it's, it's you know, any, any medium that you work in um, is accepted. And um, this is not a, a juried show. So um, submitting your piece is a guarantee that it will um, be included in the exhibition. Um, some general rules about participants. So this is for 55 plus, um, and you also have to hold a current membership at one of the three um, presenting organizations. So that's the RMG, the libraries, and the Oshawa Senior Center. Um, I didn't include it in this list, but uh, staff members who work at any of those three organizations are, are not eligible for this project. So just something to keep in mind as well. Um, and then one last piece of eligibility that I wanted to highlight, and that's that first place winners from the last competition are not eligible in the current year, but they may have, uh, you know, it, uh, put work into the exhibition um, anyway, even though they won't be considered for um, any of the prize categories. Um, this is, uh, this was implemented last year. Um, but we didn't have a show last year. So in this instance, the last competition is 2019 um, and the current year is 2021. And moving forward, that will be, um, you know, a, a, a rule that's sort of kept in place. So another sort of new thing from last year that we didn't get to sort of see to full uh, fruition um, was these competition categories. So this was, uh, you know, an effort to sort of make sure that there was uh, competition among like um, artworks and, and levels of experience. So there are three categories in total. And so when you're submitting your work, work you'll identify which category you want to be considered under. And this is a, a self-identification. So you don't have to provide any proof of you know, why you belong in these categories, but you just sort of, you know, identify which one you um, believe you fall under. So the first one is, is the novice category. So that's for any artist um, who's been working for three years or less. So maybe this is a brand new hobby, um, but you want to get involved and you want to put your work in the show, um, you'll fall under this category. So this is for folks who are participating in the seniors art competition for the first time. Um, and for folks that yeah are just sort of new to the world of, of art making. The second category is hobby. Um, so this is for folks who maybe you've been making work for a fair number of years, maybe you've uh, submitted work to this exhibition in the past, um, but it's specifically for artists who don't sort of sell their work commercially, um, artists who, who haven't had experience teaching art to other people, um, basically a sort of a, a, a non-professional artist. So if this is something that you do um, as a hobby or an interest, um, but you've been working on it for, for a good amount of time, that's the category for you. The last category is open. Um, so this is for folks who, who, who sort of make art professionally or teach art professionally. Um, maybe ha they have some exhibition history in other juried shows, um, maybe at other art galleries. Um, that's the category for those folks. So every year uh, this uh, exhibition has a specific theme um, and it corresponds with the um, theme for the seniors writing competition as well. So for 2021, for both of those um, projects, the theme is victory. Um, and I mean, there's so many different ways I think that you can interpret victory. I've thrown a few pictures up here that I think um, speak to some of the things that might be relevant. So, um, you know, victory, we think of like winning. It's like at the, the arrival at an achievement or an accomplishment. Um, it can also be kind of an, a, a sort of process of overcoming. I think that the notion of victory suggests that there was some challenge that was overcome um, and that you're sort of on the other side and you're celebrating um, or really relishing that victory. Um, I think that one of the things that I wanted to mention as well with this theme is that in 2020, uh, the theme was resilience. And um, because unfortunately we had to cancel um, the exhibition, the theme of resilience didn't get its uh, day in the sun <laughs> um, on the art competition side of things. But I, I, I think it's really interesting and um, maybe an, uh, 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 an insightful way to approach victory is to think through the ways that victory and resilience are really closely related. I think that 
the ways that resilience captures um, strength and toughness and, and the ability to overcome and to have the toolkit to overcome again in future challenges. Um, there's a lot that resonates there with the theme of victory. So if you had some, uh, a work that you kind of had earmarked for the show on resilience, I, I, I suspect um, that those pieces also have a home in an exhibition on victory. Um, but of course the theme is there as, um, you know, it's open to interpretation. And, and the beautiful thing about this exhibition is that we see so many different ways of interpreting the theme. So, um, you know, it's all in your imagination and, and interpreting that theme, in, uh, that theme in your own way is, uh, is one of the, the best parts of, of seeing the show come together. Are there any questions just um, with, with what we've covered so far? I'm going to get into now um, the judging criteria. So breaking down a little bit how the competition side of things is, is um, dealt with and how the pieces are kind of judged by the jury. Um, but if there are any questions about what I've covered so far. Um, it, yes, I have a question. Sure. Uh, it, when you mentioned the competition, I was the winner of the novice competition previously. So that makes me really mm -hmm. ineligible to compete this time. If um, I go to a hobby. I, 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 I think it, that is the one maybe um, exception. I can confirm that with my, our partners to be 100% sure, but my memory of when we established these rules um, is that it really pertains to like re-entering the same category. So oh, if someone okay. was in the hobby category before and the previous year they won, um, that makes them in ineligible to win in the, the current year. Okay. Um, but novice is, is unto itself kind of a, a unique category because as well, there's only one winner for novice. Yes. But in both the hobby and the open category, there's the winner and there's a runner up. Um, so I'm going to say that the eligibility um, for winning uh, exists if you're moving out of a category into another. That's what I assumed, but I thought okay. I'd better ask. And yeah, the other yeah. Was the, uh, the other question is uh, commercially, um, if you have a website and, and you you are trying to sell your 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 paintings online, um, is that considered uh, your commercial ven venture or is it more where you are being contracted? Um, yeah, so uh, a sort of commercial history can include any selling of your work. Okay. Um, I think I would say that. I'm just going to check here my notes. Yeah, I mean, there is that there is room within this, I think, to interpret the categories for yourself um, okay. and to be honest about where you think you fall. Um, mm -hmm. I think that if you're very new to selling your work, like if you have sold a couple of pieces, um, yes. I think that it's possible that you could still be within that hobby category. Um, okay. The idea with the open category um, is that there is a bit of a history there. And I think that like a few years built up history um, would be what I would suggest, um, maybe places someone into the open category. Um, because we're thinking about folks who um, have sort of have a, 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 that they would identify themselves as a professional artist, um, that it's something that they've been pursuing and sort of feel somewhat established in that as, a, you know, it doesn't have to be like your primary source of income or anything. But, no, no, um, no. But there's a sense that like, like it's, a, it's a venture that you have put a lot of time into and have built it up over a few years. Your um, reputation, yes, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, okay, dear, that's it. You've answered my question. Thanks very much. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you for the question. Anyone else before we move on? How many pieces are you entering uh, for this? 
for each category. Yeah, so there's only, and, uh, there's size, one. Sizes also for these. Can you say that again? You mentioned size. Okay, so in terms of the number of works, um, it is one artwork per artist. Um, so it's, uh, you know, you, you identify the category that you believe you fall under and you can submit one piece um, to, to the exhibition and to the competition. Um, in terms of size, um, we permit works that are two-dimensional, that are four feet by four feet maximum and four feet by four feet by four feet if it's a 3D artwork. Um, I think that, um, you know, one of the considerations, I, I think that those are pretty um, generously sized uh, parameters. Um, but the other piece that you should really consider is also just like the logistics of getting the piece to um, the site to be photographed. Um, just in terms of like transportation and that kind of thing. Um, but if, if, if it fits within those parameters and you can get it in your vehicle or some other way, um, then, then it will be accepted, yeah. Anything else? Hi, I'm, I'm not on camera. My name's Laura, I'm, I'm helping my father, Roger. He's, um, I'm his tech interference today. So I read the categories. We joined, we did join late. We had an appointment this morning. Um, so his situation is he's never sold any art. He's done this basically during COVID and, and um, he doesn't have a website or anything like that. Would he be novice or hobby? Yeah, it's, um, you know, if this is like a, a year old pursuit, I think novice is is a great category to select. Um, but you're welcome to go into the hobby category if you wanted to. Um, but the hobby category, you know, that could be someone who's been painting for five years. Um, and uh, they also maybe haven't sold their work, but they've been painting away. And, um, you know, that's a, a significant amount of time compared with um, one year. But uh, yeah, it is, it is a where you'd like to place yourself. But um, my, my instinct for this situation is to say that novice is probably the right category. Okay, great, thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, I'll, I'll jump into the judging criteria here. Um, and then at the end, if there's any other questions that come up either um, within the context of the criteria or anything else we can um, you know, address those then. Um, so the pieces are judged um, by a jury of um, three folks who are not within, um, you know, the organizing institutions. Um, and each of the five criteria are judged equally. So out of a, a score of five for a total of 25. Um, so they are um, originality and response to the theme, skill, um, elements of art, composition, and degree of difficulty. And I'll just take a minute to explain what each of those things are. So in terms of originality and response to the theme, what we're really looking for is the way you have interpreted uh, the theme of victory. So is it a creative response? Is it novel? Is it unusual? Um, and also, is it meaningful? Like, does it does it say something? Does it speak to us in a way that um, really kind of punches in the gut or makes you think about something you hadn't thought of before? Um, or maybe does it convey a specific message related to victory um, or sort of suggest that you're uh, carrying a or sitting within a position in response to the theme of victory? The next uh, category is skill. So this is sort of like, given your choice of materials, um, how skillfully have you employed and applied uh, the relevant techniques of, of that material? Um, so there's an image here of uh, Mary Pratt's uh, jelly shelf from 1999. Um, Mary Pratt is one of my favorite uh, Canadian artists um, and she works in oil paint um, and one of the 
sort of qualities of oil paint is that it's very luminous and you can really achieve fine detail. And folks who work in oil paint probably are really familiar with that. Um, so some of the things that you can accomplish is like really fine color blending. Uh, you can really capture the effect of light um, and also sort of surface textures. That's the kind of thing that oil paint uh, allows you to do as an artist. Um, so in this piece, you know, Mary Pratt uh, was the queen of, you know, capturing light and texture and color um, using that medium. So really we're looking for sort of a confidence or a mastery of, of the material that you have chosen. Um, and of course, you know, different materials have different strengths. And uh, so we're looking for your ability to apply the strengths of, the, of your medium of choice um, to the work that you have submitted. The next thing we're looking at is uh, overall, your use of um, the elements of art. Um, and this is relevant for 2D works and 3D works. Um, the, the sort of list here, I'll just read them out. So line, color, shape, form, value, space, and texture. So I have a photo here of uh, Kanojuak Ashivak's uh, The Enchanted Owl from 1960. Um, a really graphic, bold piece of work. Um, when we're thinking about something like lines, um, Kanojuak Ashevek uses really sparingly um, the sort of expressive um, potential of a line. So you can see it in the articulation of the face and the wing. Um, and it really gives this piece a sense of texture. Um, it gives us a sense of form. We know what this animal is because of the lines and the way that they're used. And even though they're really sparing and they're really, you know, there's not an overuse of line here, but it really effectively captures what this subject matter is. Um, and lines of course can be, uh, continuous or broken, vertical, jagged, horizontal. Um, they can play a part in sort of conveying the psychology of the artwork. Um, so line is a, you know, a really important piece. Um, when it comes to color, um, we're looking at sort of the hues, the, the values and the intensity of the colors that you've chosen. Um, color obviously can play such a huge part in an artwork. Um, in this one, the choice of just the two colors um, sort of contributes to how bold and strong this piece appears. Um, but color can also be used to provoke certain feelings. If you're going for a really realistic work, what we'd be looking for is realistic use of color. Um, but if you're not going for realism, you know, what, what is the color adding? What emotions is it bringing to the work? Um, and how does that, you know, make us feel as a viewer? Uh, shape. Uh, so, I mean, this is another uh, one of the reasons I chose this piece. Um, shape is so important here. So shapes being sort of closed lines, uh, the shapes in this piece really create the rhythm. So the sort of energy sort of coming out of the head of the owl and then the sort of like swooping movement um, of the tail feathers. Um, the shape is playing a huge role in, in, in the effectiveness of this image. Um, so form, that's a little bit more uh, relevant for three-dimensional works um, because it's basically when uh, depth in an image sort of becomes 3D. Um, so that's something to think about with um, uh, sculptural works. Um, value, we're just talking about the sort of the light, lightness and darkness of a color. So, um, Usually value is uh, used to create contrast or depth, um, sometimes even mood. Um, you know, if there's a, a light source in your painting, let's say a window, the sort of like um, value of the objects, uh, you know, uh, receiving that light, um, does it, is that what you've captured in the work? That sort of sense of like um, lightness and darkness, um, highlights and shadows that kind of thing. Um, so space, um, you know, positive and negative space, how are you using the picture plane? Um, does it feel balanced? Um, is there, uh, you know, if let's say you're doing a landscape, is there a foreground, a midground, and a background? Um, what kind of, you know, illusions of depth are you conjuring? 
within the space of your canvas or um, you know, paper um, or, or photograph. And lastly, texture. So that's obviously just the way things uh, feel or, or looks like it would feel um, if you touched it. And, you know, sometimes texture is uh, the most important part of a work. You know, there's something really beautiful about really textured paint. Um, or if you're, you know, painting, let's say, um, an animal and there's like a really strong sense of the feathers or the fluffy fur, um, you know, how have you captured that? Um, and, and does that translate the sort of two-dimensional? Does it make me think that I could reach out and, and touch it? So the other thing we're looking for is composition. Um, so this is kind of like your overall use of space. Um, is it balanced? Is it well organized? I've, I've, I've thrown a couple of pictures on here just to show you how, um, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways, of course, to compose um, an image. Uh, oftentimes, uh, there's a sense of like, uh, you know, it's, it's useful to capture some energy that like uh, comes from the bottom and goes up. So you can see that with um, the pictures in the top right and bottom left corner. Um, this one sort of in the bottom right corner, um, the composition has this sort of meandering line, which helps to give that illusion of space kind of receding far into the picture plane. Um, this, this piece on the top left, um, that kind of like uh, sort of splitting the picture plane up into um, like a slightly off balance. Um, so not it's not like a symmetrical picture. It's sort of like the, the tallest tree is a little bit off to the left um, and the other trees sort of come down away from there, which creates the sense that like the piece is really balanced. So the, the other thing that we're sort of thinking about is that do all of the elements that you've used, um, do they contribute to creating an overall um, really pleasing picture to look at? Uh, the last uh, piece that we uh, judge is the degree of difficulty. So just overall, how complex is the piece? Um, so we're thinking about how difficult it might have been um, to execute the, the work that you've, you've submitted. Um, and this picture here is of our 2019 winner, um, John McFeeders, and it was uh, uh, moose antlers uh, with um, pen and ink. Um, and the detail in there um, was pretty incredible. And, uh, you know, looking at it, you were aware of the labor that went into it. Um, and of course it's a unique surface. So there's all kinds of different degrees of difficulty that come into play um, in this work. So, um, you know, John uh, had, a, had a high score for degree of difficulty um, for his submission of this piece. So those are the uh, five categories. Um, any questions about those or anything else? I yeah. just wondered, are you taking photographs? I, I, I heard you mention photography. You are taking. you accepting it into the competition? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> In that case, um, you know, if, if you are working with photography, uh, the submission process will be a little bit different because uh, we're not going to ask you to bring in a printed photograph so that we can take a photo of it. Um, we would just accept your digital submission. So if you are able to, um, you know, just submit the file, um, that's how you would uh, submit a photograph. Yeah. So the, the email addresses that were um, included in the brochure and um, earlier in the presentation, Jen or Tracy, um, you'd be submitting um, the photograph to them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'm wondering in terms of uh, the interpretation of the work that you're doing and uh, the victory theme, are you expecting some kind of text captioning uh, description to come along with the piece? Yeah. So you can absolutely submit a sort of short statement about about the piece that you're submitting. Um, there is a, a small space on the form. So if you look at the brochure, there's um, in the like the, the this form where you put your name and the title and everything. Two lines have been given to provide a bit of a description of, of, of your piece. Um, 
I think that sort of within reason, we would take a slightly like that is it is a small, you know, little little block of text. So um, if you wanted to submit something more, you can. Um, I would say it would it would be maximum 100 words, um, you know, keeping in mind uh, that it would be challenging to read longer pieces uh, from everyone. But um, I think, you know, a maximum 100 words would be if you wanted to like it, attach it or uh, to the actual form, then we could take that too. But it really should speak for itself, but still there may be some uh, background that you want to provide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is the, the truth is that this the the competition has generally been judged exclusively on uh, the work itself and um, sort of writing pertaining to the work um, isn't a, a huge part of uh, the sort of like judging of the competition. Um, but in terms of you know putting a, a label in the exhibition as well, it's nice to kind of say a few words if you have something that you really want to share about it. So for both of those contexts, I think a little bit of text is okay. So a little bit of text, would that be victory through liberty and freedom would work? Yeah, I mean, if that's um, if that's the title of the work, yes. is it the title? Or it will be. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. The, um, you could, in addition to that, like I'm thinking, you know, like a sentence or two is kind of, maybe maybe three <laughs> depending on how long your sentences are um so in addition to the title you could have a sentence that says this piece blah 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 <laughs> um if you if you wanted to sort of articulate what it is that your your motivation or what you're why i use the word liberty and why i use the word freedom right yeah you okay. could do that yeah. yeah all right sounds good thank you you're welcome yeah, there's no, um, you know, restriction on the title. So, you know, it can, the title itself can be as, as long as you want, I guess. <laughs> Short titles are best. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Uh, one of the things that I have found in the past uh, is that people really enjoy seeing the detail and even move their heads closer into the, mm -hmm. the piece, whatever it may be. I'm just wondering, uh, for the folks that are going to be looking at this online, the virtual show, will it be one photo they're looking at or will there be a photo uh, showing the picture itself, the piece, and then perhaps even a close up, if indeed it requires, or something that might be uh, uh, pleasing to the audience? Mm -hmm. One picture so, only, or would there be possibility of a second one if they deem it necessary? So for um, two-dimensional works, there's going to be one photo only, but there is the capacity on the website to zoom in. So you could, you know, take a closer look at, at different oh, sections by utilizing a zoom feature. But in addition to that, um, what we've decided is that for three-dimensional works, um, we could have two up to three photographs. So, you know, for something that's meant to be seen in the round, um, we want to make sure that at least there's two, if not three views to kind of get a sense of, of the object. Um, you know, different works will have different needs with in terms of that, but um, we definitely want to make sure that if there's a piece that is meant to be seen from multiple angles that um, we're capturing that. So um, that's something that you can discuss with the photographer when you um, bring your work in to be photographed. But um, yeah, we're going to accept up to three images per um, 3D work. All right, thank you. No problem. Wait and that can include detail too. Like if it's that um, the sculpture, it's like, I want to see it from the front, the back and up close or the front, the back and uh, the top. <laughs> Um, you can kind of like talk through that with with the photographer. All right. Thanks. Question. Weight restriction. Can you say that again? Weight restriction. Do you have any? Um, I don't think so. I mean, the, the, maybe Jen and Tracy, if they have any uh, comments on where I know that they're going to sort of designate some rooms 
or like a room at each location um, or possibly just at one location that's we'll we'll confirm that closer to the time um but i would say like if 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 the room is it close to the entrance is there a an elevator like uh would we have we could probably lend a dolly um like the rmg could deliver a dolly to you guys if you don't have one if there was a heavier artwork that needed some help getting from entrance to the location where they where, where they will be photographed yeah, I would echo that, Hannah, and what you said earlier, um, just considering the transportation of the art, right? So as long as it is something that you can transport into the library, and then if the photos are at the library, they will be put in the elevator and brought to the third floor where there's no public access to interfere with the photo taking. So as long as we're able to do that without causing any serious injury to anybody, um, or with the assistance of a dolly or a, or a library book truck or something like that at, at the library anyway, then I don't think a weight restriction would come into play there. Do you have like a, a particular weight in mind like is there a piece that you have that you know how heavy it is well if you're using a four by four canvas that's uh, that can be a little weighty i uh, just wondered uh, what your restrictions were on that also uh, do you outline in your brochure um, how you want the uh, wire hanging and whatever on the back of the picture to be done um there isn't a a, a sort of there aren't any specifications provided on the brochure i am um, I would say, I mean, basically the, 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 the concept is that we're gonna have a nail or a couple of nails or screws um, ready so that each person who comes will just sort of hang roughly in the same location. Um, so, I mean, the, 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 and I will also say like, this is a piece that we're still kind of ironing out the details of how we exactly want to do this. And absolutely, once someone makes an appointment, we'll provide all of the detailed instructions um, closer to so that you know exactly what to expect and what we are expecting from folks bringing work in. Um, because I'm just like, as, as I'm speaking aloud, for example, I'm thinking about, um, you know, if you were hanging with D-rings and uh, you were coming in hoping that we could screw some fresh uh, nails in to match the, the width of your piece, um, that probably is not something that we can accommodate. Um, so I'm thinking, you know, in general, a wire is going to be better because then um, we can utilize the same uh, hardware for each of the artworks that's coming in. I think that the other thing that I think I'll say is that if, if anyone has any concerns, like I have, you know, a piece that's this big or it's really heavy, you know, whatever it might be, um, sending me an email about that, um, is 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 fine and i can kind of we can strategize together you know bringing obviously our expertise from the rmg with you know hanging our work so that the library is prepared um you know to to handle each situation as it comes in um but that's our our, our plan is to kind of have it have a standard setup you'll just come in and uh leave <laughs> for the next person so um yeah does that answer your question I know it's not yes, it super. That's great. Thanks very much, Hannah. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you very much. I'm yeah, excited to see this, all the work. This has been really good. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, any, any other questions that come in, don't hesitate to email any of us and uh, we'd be happy to get some answers to you.